Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. You can win a lot of money in Michigan just for being vaccinated now, but will the new sweepstakes be enough to change the minds of those who haven't planned on getting a COVID shot? State lawmakers just approved a historic investment in public education, and we've got a look at where that money is likely to go. And questions tonight surrounding a Detroit pump station that didn't get the job done during some of the worst of the recent rain and flooding. We're glad you're with us tonight at 6. Two officials, one in Macomb County, one in Detroit, now calling for an investigation into decisions made at the Connor Creek Station. Sky 4 giving us a look at the facility near Jefferson Chalmers and the Detroit Gross Point Park border. That's where we've seen some of the worst flooding in homes. Local 4 defender Sean Lay is there with a look at what allegedly went wrong and what's being done about it. Sean? And if you have a wet basement with storm water and sewage, let's get to the bottom of this. Take a look at this building right here on Jefferson on the east side. That is the Connor Creek pumping station. Macomb County Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller tells us she knew everyone knew the rain was coming. She believes there was no plan here and no backup plan if things went wrong. And when things she says did go wrong, employees rushed here and apparently found the gates locked. All of this damage and all of this stress you are saying could have been avoided. Well, we certainly had a lot of rain and no system is designed for that amount of rain. However, it does appear that at the Connor Creek pump station, there was a bad management failure there to operate that plant. Tonight, the Macomb County Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller calling out the Great Lakes Water Authority, saying a key pump, the Connor Creek pump, was undermanned, unprepared, had no backup generator as storm water and sewage flooded home after home in Jefferson Chalmers and the Gross Points. You know, they talk about some power outage. Then I heard they had to get an electrician to come down and flip the darn circuit breaker. GLW. UA CEO Sue McCormick tells the defenders there was a disruption in service, but quote, at no time was the pump station offline. Have you confirmed if the actual gates to the pump were locked and some of the employees could not even get in? I've heard that from several sources. I haven't confirmed it. Again, that's why I'm calling for an independent investigation. We all, we all want answers. We all want the same thing. The defenders went to DWSD Director Gary Brown, who also wants an independent investigation into the Connor Creek Station. Uh, I know enough about the system to know that seven inches of rain, uh, the city was going to flood, homes were going to flood, streets were going to flood. Could things have been done better? Uh, we'll figure that out uh, in, in the very near future. There was a bad management failure there to operate that plant. Back here live when those floodwaters were made and sewage was making its way through this part of Detroit and through the gross points. It was headed towards thousands of homes in St. Clair Shores and East Point. Miller says Macomb Public Works then at their border had to discharge 96 million gallons of treated water and sewage into Lake St. Clair to save thousands of basements. DWSD gave us a lengthy statement today. The whole statement's on our website. Click on Detroit.com. DWSD will have more to talk about this tomorrow. Devin and Kim. And we will be following it. Sean, before you go, um, some people might ask why Candace Miller is concerned about a Detroit Public Works issue. But in fact, Macomb County does have a stake in what happens at that pump station. Talk a little bit about that. Sure, it's part of DWSD, mm -hmm. so it is going to have a say, and uh, everyone's going to have a say who is part of DWSD, who is going to investigate the independent uh, entity that will investigate, and then how to make these fixes going forward. Yeah, and we'll be following it. Sean, thanks. We're getting our first look at the 22-year-old Detroit man accused of killing a child in a hit-and-run crash. Maurice Montez Sumler is charged with leaving the scene of an accident causing death. The victim? five-year-old Preston Singleton. Larry Spruill was in court and joins us live with the newest developments. Larry. Well, Devin, a judge gave 22-year-old Maurice Sumler a $250,000 bond today, and if he is convicted, he can face up to 15 years in prison. 22-year-old Maurice Montez Sumler faced Judge Michael Chupa Thursday. He's hearing the charges he's facing for the first time. Mr. Sumler, the government's accusing you of being in the city of Warren on or about June 29th, 21. On that date and at that time, they think you were involved in a motor vehicle accident resulting in the death of a five-year-old. 
and that as a result of that accident, you fa uh, failed to stop and render aid. Police say that leaving the scene of an accident causing death charge is because Sumler hit and killed five-year-old Preston Singleton on June 29th around 940 at night here at the intersection of Van Dyke and Stevens near the Warren Centerline border. Little Preston's family told me Preston was riding his bike with family members when Sumler hit him with his SUV and kept going. Police also said they found Sumler down the street at a gas station after he left his car at a Taco Bell nearby. Officers say at first Sumler told police he hit a deer and he was speeding because he was late to work. He also told police he smoked marijuana before he left home. Sumler's attorney told the judge he's a high school graduate, he worked at Chrysler, and he was not guilty. Judge Michael Chupa gave him a $250,000 cash bond and he must wear a GPS monitor. And he's due back in court on July 13th. We are live tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. It's just such a, a terrible story, Larry. What's been the reaction from the victim's family to this? Yeah, and Devin, I spoke with the family last night and again today, and they are glad that police arrested the suspect and that justice will be served. But you have to imagine still, they say this is a very tough time yeah. for the family. Meanwhile, they will have a prayer vigil tonight at 930 at that intersection. Devin. Yeah. All right, Larry. OK, a look at today's coronavirus numbers. The state reports 228 new cases in the last 24 hours. That's 33 more cases than reported Wednesday. 10 additional deaths are also being reported. Michigan, meanwhile, is incentivizing vaccination in the form of a sweepstakes called My Shot to Win. Anyone who has received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine can register. Vaccinated adults will have a shot at cash prizes. There'll be a $50,000 drawing each day for 30 days. A $1 million drawing coming up on July 10th, a $2 million drawing on August 3rd when the sweepstakes uh, as a whole will end. If you're between 12 and 17 years of age, a parent or guardian can register you to win one of nine scholarships of $55,000 each. Registration is open online at myshocktowin.com, which we've linked at our website. Click on Detroit.com or you can call the state's COVID hotline. That number is 888. 535-6136. You should call that number between the hours listed. Governor Whitmer says the hope is this sweepstakes will push Michigan over the line of its 70% vaccination goal. Right now, over 61, well, it's actually 62.4%, nearly 5 million Michiganders, 16 and up, have gotten at least their first shot. Now, from the start, our vaccination goal has been 70% of Michiganders who are 16 and up. With the sweepstakes, we hope to increase our rate by that 9%, roughly 700,000 more Michiganders so that we can get to that 70% rate. Yeah, you heard her say that number, 700,000 more Michiganders. So will a vaccine sweepstakes really make the difference? Well, it's the chance to win part of that $5 million. Is it enough to push people to get vaccinated? That's the big question. Our Dr. Frank George is here with a look at the motivation behind the, the money. Doc? Yeah, Kim and Devin. So, you know, for millions of Americans, the incentive of not getting COVID was more than enough motivation to get vaccinated. But obviously, there is still a substantial chunk of people who need more. And when it comes to motivation, experts say sometimes cold, hard cash does the trick. Different people have different things that motivate them. And this may be one of many things that we need to do to try and get the full vaccine coverage that we need as a society to protect ourselves against COVID-19. Dr. Brian Zickman Fisher is a professor of health behavior and health education at U of M School of Public Health. He says a sweepstakes will motivate some, but certainly not everyone. It's not probably going to change the minds of somebody who has really got lots of explicit concerns about the vaccine or for whatever reason really have a hard no. But it is potentially going to make a difference for the people for whom they just haven't gotten around to it. They haven't had a reason to make that extra effort to get vaccinated. And this gives them a reason to do so. He believes the scholarship component may be particularly effective. We're talking about teenagers and or their parents. What's going to motivate them to bother to get their otherwise healthy looking kid to go get vaccinated? Well, obviously the costs of college are significant and that could be a really strong motivator. Zickman Fisher says a sweepstakes may help, but it's not the final answer. 
Lotteries are things that people often do out of hope. I think the larger theme at this point about getting people vaccinated is take the vaccine to them. Like the people who are willing to travel long distances to rearrange their schedules, they're already vaccinated. We're gonna have to take that extra step. Now, Dr. Zickman Fisher says literally meeting people where they are also provides the opportunity to address some of the lingering fears and concerns that people have about the vaccine. And that's something that a sweepstakes just won't fix. And I understand meeting people where they are, Frank, but several states have already done vaccine lotteries and, and other of these types of incentives. Do you think Michigan is a little too late to the party with this? Well, you know, we asked Zickman Fisher that question, and he says, given how many people in Michigan are still unvaccinated, it's definitely not too late to at least try this. Now, he wasn't willing to predict how much impact it will have, but he said it's definitely going to motivate some people who are still on the fence. Yeah, well, we'll see how it works. Yeah. Dr. McGeorge, thank you. Now, a local four update. Deputies think a man with a history of robbing banks did it again in Macomb County. They are looking for Michael Salami in connection with yesterday's robbery of the PNC Bank on 26 Mile in Washington Township. Deputies searched his home. They found a gun linking him to the crime, though they didn't find him. Deputies say he robbed the bank yesterday around three with seven people inside. No one hurt, but Salami did get away with money. No charge is going to be filed against a Macomb County father in the shooting death of his daughter's boyfriend. 43-year-old Jamar Pye was killed last month outside the Prentice Point Apartments in Harrison Township. Investigators say Pye allegedly assaulted his girlfriend, then got into an argument with her father. When deputies arrived, they say the 66-year-old was doing chest compressions on Pye. The father has a CPL for the gun. Prosecutor's office said today the case is closed, though has not yet elaborated on why. Well, we know selling cars was not easy last year around this time. Wait until you hear how much better GM is doing in this year's second financial quarter that's coming up. Let's check in with Ben. Devin and Kim, rain is going to leave us alone for a while, and the humidity is as well. The question is, will it come back before the holiday is done? And we'll answer that coming up. The state of Michigan passes billions of dollars to help fund our schools coming up. We hear from one educator who says it's a triumph, but also says there are challenges ahead.